What's up guys? You are on the air and off the books with Beth Ann and Samantha and today we are going to be talking about the ancient Magus Bride. I think it's pronounced Magus. If it's pronounced Magus, uh, let me know sure. that I'm pronouncing it wrong. Yeah. Um, this is by Kor Yamazaki and we so far we have read volumes one through three and we both really really like it like i think i would probably give it a nine out of ten yes, right now i think i'd give it a yeah four or five for sure a four or five which or five. translates to into a like a nine, nine out of ten, ten. <laughs> yes um so basically the ancient magus bride magus magus whatever it is um it's about a girl who is basically, she's basically just giving up on life. She has nothing left to live for. She doesn't really have a purpose or a place. And so this man tells her, hey, you can um, sell yourself to somebody at an auction, which sounds really bad. Um, it's like a magic auction where they yes. sell... Um, it's really bad. Like it, <laughs> they sell like supernatural creatures. And werewolves here. and fairies and like yeah. all these other things that people have captured. It's like the black market essentially. Yeah. So she goes and she goes for like this this humanoid creature purchases her for what like two million dollars. It was like five million. Yeah, right? something in the millions. It's a crazy number. And so this this man humanoid thing purchases her and takes her back to his home and he tells her hey i'm going to train you to be my mage mm -hmm. and also my bride and bum, bum, she's bum. just like she's just kind of like what? well i mean what but like okay because you know nobody nobody's cares about me. yeah my life is gonna be over anyway i was gonna like she acts like she just wants to die. Yes. And she's very depressed, very lonely. But her mom and dad, her, her dad's like nowhere MIA. Her, her mom's, mom's dead. dead. Yeah. Her aunt doesn't want anything to do with her. Right. Nobody, um, she's gone through just, her whole family and nobody's wanted her. Right. So. Um, He's the first one that's actually wanted her. So I think so that's she's, where she's like yeah. willing to accept her fate at this point. Yeah. Um, and that's basically all we can tell you as far as, like, this story goes. Otherwise, we kind of get into spoilers um, at this point. But it also turns out that not only is she this human, but she's actually a special human and she didn't know. Yes. She's just something called a sleigh, sleigh beggy. I think. Yeah. And I... What? Uh, how do they explain it? Like, it's it's hard for me to wrap my head around. It's basically, I think, a, it's a, like a creature human that can absorb, like... Yeah. Pretty much any magic. She's like a black hole for magic, essentially. Yeah. She can take it from anywhere. She stores it inside of herself. Mm -hmm. She constantly is regenerating magic yes. or something like that, giving it back. I don't know. She's a big part of the cycle, but she's like a very rare creature because apparently they don't live very long. No, they die r really young, usually. Right, but the, um, the mage that she's working for hasn't told her this yet. Yes. Um... Until she finds out later on in the book. And um, it's it's really interesting because he wants her to be her bride, but he's technically a fae, so he can't really feel emotion. Right. Like real human emotion. But she's making him feel emotion. I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. Yeah. Because he's technically not... He's not... I don't know. These first three volumes... He's not technically fey. He's not technically human. He's just, like, this random monster. Mm -hmm. But we haven't, like, got to his origin story yet. Right. And I'm really curious to see because his, like, actual form is epic. It's so cool It's looking. creepy. Creepy. It's so good. I think that's my favorite part of the whole story. Yeah. I mean, the love, they're like, the romance is fine. I would like for them to be together. I'm afraid they're both going to die young and it's going to be miserable and I'm going to hate it. Um, I don't think they'll die. I think they'll both die together young. Really? Yeah. And I don't think that they're going to share, like, the love we want them to share. I really you think, think it's going to be tragic. Gonna be like a... Horrible, tragic ending. Yes. <sighs> I hope not. And now, like, that she's got Ruth, her familiar, like, he's bound to her. So when she dies, he dies. So I think they're all just going to die. Yeah. It's definitely giving me, like, a little bit of Beauty and the Beast vibes. 
yeah. but like not that's as a good. I, that's a good way to put it. Not as like Disney. It's no, pretty it's very, dark. Very dark, and it's very like real world magic. Like there's alchemy in here, um, and alchemists and mages, who are technically like magicians or people who use magic, are like not friends, but they're not enemies. Right. Like, they're just... They don't really like each other, but they don't hate each other. Right. Um, and I guess alchemists in this story um, are different from... It's so complicated, you have to read it. Like, there's so many, like... There was a lot rules. in the first three books. Yeah. There's a lot of characters. There's If you love world development, if you like, like, world building and, like, knowing, like, a universe or... This author does a fantastic job of creating this world with its rules and boundaries and things like that because there's also, like, Christianity here. Right. I mean, I think that's my biggest gripe, though, is that they kind of get a little rude about it. (laughs) Right. They poke fun a little bit at Christianity, um, and I don't care for that. That's just my personal opinion. So if you're a little sensitive to that stuff, then it's, it's not the book for you because it is a little harsh. But, um... Otherwise, it's really good. There's a lot of action in it. It's not like creepy love, you know, like smoochy, kissy, gross. <laughs> smoochy, kissy, gross. It's a sweet story, and he's really just trying to find herself. He's really trying to find himself through her, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I've been... So I think I'm on technically what would be book one. So I'm on episode one of the show. I started watching it on Crunchyroll because that's like literally the only thing that it's on. And the show is pretty much like follows the book 100%. Huh. And it's really good. And I like... I want to watch it I don't so know. Bad. It's easier for me to follow because, you know, it's in like, you know, the manga's in black and white. And yeah. I like to see the color and stuff. And I don't know. I feel like sometimes the animes are easier to follow than the mangas yeah um i think everything that i've watched so far has been extremely close to the manga they tend to do a better job about that than other things yeah like the promised neverland um i started reading the second half like what would qualify as season two watching and i haven't watched it yet but i have been reading it Mm mm-hmm and um, from what you've told me, there aren't a lot of differences. There are some, yeah. but not a ton. So, and the ending of that is phenomenal. Yeah, I'm, it's crazy. I gotta get through that. I need to check out. I've been reading for the podcast, so I haven't been able to finish them, but I'm almost done. Almost done. Almost done. Manga, are, and these are really fast reads. This yeah. took me literally maybe thirty minutes to read. Yeah, same. Um, I actually had to Google. I had to Google how to read manga because I haven't read manga in so long. And I was like, I don't know if I'm reading this right. <laughs> I was <get> so confused. <laughs> like, just oh. like, okay, wait. But it's, so, it's really good so far. Um, besides my personal gripes, which don't have anything to do with you guys, I do like it. Yeah. Well, if you like magic and you like stuff like that, this is also definitely for you. It's very fantasy. Yes. Yeah. And we do have... Very much fantasy. I think that we do have most of the series in print, like, on our shelves. Yep. We have um, through seven checked out right now. Yes. So we will return those. So sorry. We read them. Um, And then we have... I think we only have one and two on Overdrive. Correct. Yes. Because that's where I would have preferred to read them, but that's the only ones we have. I think there are... um, what did we say? How many copies that there were? I can't remember how many books there were, but I don't think there were 50. That's not right. That was something else. Let's see. It's not a big number, um, and I think it's done. I think it's the um, manga has ended, if I'm not mistaken, unless I am completely mistaken, because the anime is over. Google says there's only 10 books. Okay, so we have them all. Nice. It's short. That's sad. Wait, okay, now Amazon says 15. Okay. So which one is it? Which one is it? Okay. I don't know. Maybe we'll have they're to consult releasing. with our um, 
manga slash graphic novel expert, Doug. Yes, Doug. We know you're going to be listening to this because you're our number one fan, so <laughs> yes. we'll be asking no you all the questions. Yeah, because I really want to finish this for sure. I definitely want to get through all of this. And if it's 15, I feel like that's manageable. It's not like One Piece that has 857,432 copies. Oh, my gosh. Or like Naruto. <laughs> Ooh, that's too much. I'm uh, sorry. I, I think I've read it. all of Naruto, too. Oh, I don't really? know how I did it, yeah. Uh-uh. Nope. I haven't even started. I haven't even watched it. Oh, it's so good. You have to watch it. It's like the... I can't go back now. It's like one of those things, like, if you weren't there when it happened, like, OG, like, showing up, like... No. I can't go back and, like, relive this moment. That you have to had. go back and relive it. Like, it's like Friends. Like, oh my god, I love uh, Friends because I was there I hate for the friends. OG. And I'm like, I can't go back and, like, live through your Friends I just don't life. like sitcoms like that. I I've know. seen a few of them, but I haven't, like, watched it from back to front front to back like or people who love Gilmore Girls and have watched it no 80 billion times we're there for every episode airing and like now Heartland on the other hand no not 27 fair. out of 10 new season comes out in October I'm so excited I might cry I don't think I've ever watched a show like that ever <sighs> See, I'm a binge watcher. Like, if I find a show I really like, I'll binge watch it. I've never, like, anticipated a new episode. Really? Anything. I don't think so, no. Then you aren't watching the right things, which might I be Heartland. I never watched the right things. I think that you would 10 out of 10 like Heartland. And no. you're just, you're just... It's just like a modern soap. No, it's not modern. It's not so like, it's a regular soap. It's not, no, it's not. It's not like soap opera. It's just it like. It feels like it. No, it's not at all. It's like it's basically just like it's about this family and like each episode there's like something happens and it's so good. I think that you would like. You know what? You're just like Nolan. You were like, oh, this is stupid. This is gonna be the the. And I'm definitely not going to be one of those because Harlan's got 80 seasons and so does Grey's Anatomy. Um, they only have 15 seasons. 15? That's a lot. You can catch up. Okay. No, I can't. Go home. Go (laughs) home. Watch episode one. Watch it. (laughs) I'm going to cry. You know what? You know what? You know what, Nolan? Nolan (laughs) said that and Nolan watched it and it's like his favorite show now. No. Not doing that. Yeah. Beth Ann. I'm the worst. It's is fine. Is actually the worst. It's fine. I don't know. I don't think I even have a favorite show. Because like, you're not watching the right shows. Like, in my whole life, like, what what could have been, what could I, like, want to rewatch? Like, nothing. I'm rewatching Teen Titans right now. I'm yes, on, like, episode yeah. six. Yeah, but it never ended. Yeah. You need to read the, uh, New graphic novels that came out. Are they good or are they They're like really weird? Good. They're really good. I like the artists that they um, hired to do it. I followed him on Instagram forever. Oh my gosh. <laughs> OG follower on Instagram. But he is amazing. And then he just, in September, um, his book about Beast Boy and Raven falling in love is coming out. Oh my gosh. That, that thing. See, I would have always thought like, I thought somebody would have done like a Robin Raven book because there was definitely really? there was definitely some like no. I don't know there was some little hint You're of that. Imagining that and like you know like when did you watch the ones they're called like the end when like the world is ending because of Raven and her dad Trigon mm-hmm. and Robin was like he was like oh my gosh I'm here for you and like I'm gonna carry you out of this fire. And I'm just like, yeah, there's something happening here. But Robin has here. this weird, like, savior complex. That's true. That he feels like he has to give his life for every single person he comes across because he's got to be the one, you know? Yeah. Starfire and Robin, forever. Yeah. Hearts, stars. I think that uh, Raven and Beast Boy work because they're so, like, oddball in the spectrum all the way over there. Like, they're yeah. all the way together. Poor Cyborg. End. He's all alone. He needs somebody. Eh. He's got that one girl. What's her name? Oh, Bumblebee. Is it Bumblebee or yeah. Jinx? I don't think... Uh, he had Jinx a little bit in the beginning, but I think that was because he was going undercover for the Hive. Mm, I thought that. I like them. I think that he does have like a little like back and forth with Jinx, but towards the end, he kind of had like a little... A little ooh-ooh with Bumblebee. Yeah. But isn't Raven like... Aren't they both like vegetarian, like vegan? 
I don't think that Raven is. I thought she was. No. But they both have, like, the same, like, values, goals, like, the same... Yeah, but, bodies, like, Beast Boy like, annoys the crap out of Raven. Yeah, but maybe but it's, like, a... Maybe it's, like, a... <sighs> like, you're so annoying, you're so cute, annoying yeah. kind of thing. But I also hate Starfire and Robin because I feel like Robin <gasps> doesn't give her the attention that okay, she Okay, true, yeah. And that she's just pining after him, and I think yeah. she should get her head out of her butt. I hated later. that they waited until, like the movie the to- travel in tokyo to like finally like ship them yeah and it's like you had all these episodes like the one i don't know if you saw the one it's because where they robin like, is so self-absorbed yeah that's true the one where they like crash and they all like separated into different planets but like robin and starfire crashed onto the same planet and like rob or starfire had lost her powers because like Robin had said, like, that's not my girlfriend, and Sheila was just, like, so, like, distraught and, like, emotionally destroyed that she... Her powers run on emotions. See, so wrong that she allowed him to affect her that way. Yeah, but her powers run on emotions, and she's so in love with him that she was like, I don't have powers anymore, and I was like... Yeah, see, that's the problem with Disney princess movies. I need a man so bad, I can't live without him. Like, whatever. (laughs) Okay, yeah, you're stupid. (laughs) You're stupid. You deserve to be captured by the evil witch, because she's got something going for her. She's successful, because she doesn't feel like her life revolves around the man, okay? (laughs) It's true, true. Um, but basically anyway. that little spiel was, um, <laughs> please bring back the OG Teen Titans. Um, that would yeah. be ever so kind you of know, you. This has nothing to do with the ancient Megas Bride. But yes. But. But in all, back, bring it around. Bring it around town. <sighs> Spongebob. Um, <laughs> this is really good and you should read it. I think it's a refreshing, brand new something. Um, it's different. Yeah. And it's a good different. Yeah. And I like it. 10 out of 10. 9 out of 10. Mm, yeah. Uh, not yet. I will, I'm not there yet. Uh, we'll see. She we'll Bethany see has book it makes commitment me. issues. I do. 100%. I'm a little harsh. I, I, because you were like, I don't think I'm going to like the Inheritance Games. I don't think I'm going to like it. I, don't I was think really I'm gonna worried like it. that I was And then like she it. was like, oh. I, okay, another segue here, side note or whatever. I finished it. Can you believe it? It didn't take me a year to finish it. And she finished it like 40 chapters before I did. I did. Look at me doing it one time and never again. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This is probably the only time that'll happen. It was so bomb.com and it ended in a twist as it should have. Yes. And I literally loved it. There's so, I love that there's so so many things that weren't resolved that are going to go into the next book. Like, why is her... Oh, we can't say anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what? Okay, I'm just, just going to stop talking. Book. Because we are going to review the entire book soon, so... Yes, it was literally the best thing I've read in a long, long time. Yes, um, 10 out of 10. So, if you guys want to read The Ancient Magus Bride, um, come to the library, check it out. We can put it on hold for you. Or go on um, Overdrive and check it out. Also, you should definitely go on TikTok and search KHCPL off the books and then, you know, follow us and like our posts because we're going to be posting little booky things on there. And we hope you guys have a great rest of the week and join us next week. Yep. See you later. Bye. Bye.